it's uh, such a, a great time to have uh, this opportunity to just share a short word with you. You know, uh, since uh, we started meeting again in our sanctuary uh, uh, this uh, January, the 1st of January, after a three-year period of uh, renovating and uh, meeting the uh, congregational standard that the Dortmund City uh, given us, uh, we've uh, been uh, praying and uh, inviting people uh, that they come and worship with us and uh, we are still looking uh, and expecting that all our members are going to come back. But uh, this week on, uh, I believe it was on Wednesday, on Wednesday morning, you know, me and my wife as usual as I routine, we just uh, meet uh, in the church early in the morning after the children have gone to school and uh, we pray. And uh, after prayer, you know, I just felt in my heart uh, on our street, main street here in Borussia Strasse uh, 83, we have a lot of people passing by uh, every day, every hour. We, had a lot of, we have a lot of people passing by. And uh, I noticed that um, many people don't even know or don't realize that there is a church here because uh, our sanctuary was a former tennis hall that God gave us, God blessed us with, and we've renovated it and uh, turned it into a very beautiful sanctuary with the help of God. So I just thought, uh, why don't you just go out and uh, start talking to people who are passing by? And I remember the first person that uh, I talked with, uh, I told him, hey, uh, do you know God I want to, is a German. I said, do you know God, I want to talk to you about God. Uh, there's something important I want to talk to you about God. And immediately when this man heard that, uh, uh, I was saddened by what he said. He said that I'm not interested to hear about God because God has left us long time ago. When I heard this, I said, ouch, wow. This man said uh, that God has left us long time ago. And when you... When he mentioned this out of his mouth, and he just walked by, but I just wanted to know, no, uh, I, I just wanted him to know that God has not left us. I told him God is still there, and God loves you, and uh, wherever you are going, whatever you, you are going to do, I just want you to know that God is still alive and active, and God is still present. And uh, from that day, I kept on praying for this man. But um, when he mentioned that, and when I've been thinking about this, uh, God uh, reminded me about uh, uh, the story of uh, Gideon in the book of Judges. But before I go there, you know, I want to say that uh, uh, from this experience, I realize there are so many people, they find themselves in uh, a situation or situations where they think or the, it's really embedded in their hearts that uh, God has forsaken us. God has uh, left us. You know, uh, one of the most important verses that has been, spoken, uh, have been uh, speaking so strongly to me in this season is that God is with us. Just like Jesus uh, told uh, the disciples that I'm going to be with you until the end of time. And this word excites me that God is with us. And uh, as a minister of the gospel, as a missionary in Germany, actually this year I'm celebrating my 20th uh, year of uh, you know, being a, a full-time missionary in Germany. And as a pastor in Dortmund, uh, I'm, I've been able to come this far just uh, with this knowledge that God is with me. But when you go back to the story of Gideon, Gideon, found himself uh, in a situation that uh, they, was, uh, they were being oppressed by the Midianites. And uh, they were in a tough situation. And then the, uh, uh, the Lord decided that he was going to encounter uh, Gideon because he wanted to use Gideon to save the Israelites uh, from the hands of the Midianites. This shows me that God cares of our day-to-day -day activities. God cares of the situation that we find ourselves in in life. And I want to, uh, if you're watching this video, I want you to also know that God cares about you. He knows where you are at and he's sending you help. So expect help. 
in this situation. That's why God, uh, that's how God just appeared uh, uh, to Gideon and he encountered Gideon. And uh, in the process of, of talking to Gideon, I want us to just uh, uh, spend time in a few verses. We just read a few verses, which I think is very, very powerful. And I wish that this man would have given me time to talk to him, just to let him know that God has not forsaken us, that God has not forsaken you. But uh, in the book of Judges, uh, chapter 6, uh, verse uh, 11, he says, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat uh, under the terebinth tree, which is, uh, was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash, the Abizarite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress, uh, in order to hide it from the Midianites. Remember, the Midianites were the ones who were oppressing them. Verse 12, it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Wow! I have read this again and again, and I think it's so powerful. Remember, the angel, the time he was addressing Gideon, he, was, he addressed Gideon as, you mighty man of, of, of valor, God is with you. And at that time, Gideon was not even that known. He was not uh, mighty, he was not a great man. We look in, uh, uh, in um, his story in the future, how God uh, turned him and changed him to be a great man. But at this particular time that the angel was talking to him, Gideon was not a great man. He was a fearful man. He was a timid man. He was, uh, um, he was working and he, uh, he was uh, uh, threshing wheat in the wine press. Uh, with an aim to hide it from the Midianites. Because the Midianites, they're waiting for the Israelites to work. And after they've worked uh, and when they have a harvest, that's when they came and took it from, uh, from them. That's why Gideon was uh, trying to hide uh, uh, the wheat that he was working on the uh, 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 wine press. So he was, he was a timid man. He was uh, lacking courage. He was not bold. He was uh, full of fear. And, but the angel of the Lord says, the Lord is with you, you great man of valor. Wow. This is so powerful. Wherever you find yourself at, in whichever situation, I have news for you. The Lord is speaking to you and he's saying, you, uh, uh, you uh, great man of valor, you woman of valor, I am with you. So the angel says in verse 12, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon had this, and when I read this story, I realized he was surprised. Verse 13, he says, Gideon said to him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with me, why then has all this happened to us? Where are all these miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us, delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. <laughs> The angel addressed Gideon, you mighty man of valor. And he had a question, he, me, and the great man, you, man of valor, and they're telling me that God is with me. And he said, where is the God? If God is with me, why are we finding ourselves in such a situation? I know in life, we found ourselves in many situations where we, we have asked ourselves, the Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? But you find yourself in situations that people, many people are against you and sort of uh, you're about to lose in life. But God wants to remind us that no matter where we find ourselves at, no matter the situation of our lives, He is with us. God is with us. Let this go deep into you. God is with you. Like this man, I talk with him on the street. He says, if God is for us, where, uh, how, uh, why are things the way they are? Many of us are like that. We are asking yourself, is God is with me? Why is it I'm not seeing the change I'm expecting? Why is it my prayers are not being answered? One thing I want you to know, as the Bible says, the rest is not for the swift, but time and chance happen to them all. There is a time that God is bringing a breakthrough. There is a time that God is going to give you uh, your answer. The most important thing, don't be a quitter. Don't quit on God. Don't quit on yourself. Don't give up because quitters don't see the answer. Quitters don't get to the place that they're, they're going to enjoy the fruits of even the seed they've sown. So don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. I'm repeating again. 
don't quit the lord is with you the lord he has not forsaken you he has not left you he is not going to forsake you he's not going to leave you alone just like uh, gideon when a time he thought that god had forgotten him god had forsaken him god comes in the picture and he says i've not forgotten about you I've not forsaken you. I am with you. Praise the Lord. So wherever you are, I encourage you that be encouraged this day. Be encouraged knowing that the Lord is with you. Amen. So verse 13, uh, Gideon says from this other version, pardon me, Lord. Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of the Midianites. So, you know, many times I've met with people, the, they're saying, Oh, the, the stories that were written in the Old Testament or even the New Testament in the Bible, why is it uh, they're not happening in our times? Let me let you know the same God who did those miracles those days is the same God, is a miracle working God who's going to turn your situation around, who's going to turn your life around. So don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. The same God is alive and active. And if you dare believe him, he will turn your life around. If you dare believe him, he will answer you. Don't sit there and say, oh, God has abandoned us. God has never abandoned you. God is not a God who abandons. He does not abandon anybody. So verse 14, then after uh, Gideon talked uh, and uh, expressed his view, verse 14, he says, the Lord turned to him and said, go in your strength, the strength you have, and save Israel out of the Midianites. Uh, Midian, I am, am, am I not sending you? The Lord says, go in your strength. Am I not sending you? For me, the most important thing in life is hearing the voice of God and hearing the instruction of God. Because any word he speaks to you, any instruction he gives you, has the power to take you from the place where you are at, from the situation where you are at to breakthrough. He has the power to bring you to the place that God wants you to be. So God says, go in your strength. I am your God and I will help you and you are going to defeat your enemy. You are going to defeat your enemy. And then, verse 15, Gideon talks again and says, pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, um, and I am the least in my family. He says, my clan is the weakest and the smallest. You know, I always say, with God, you can climb great mountains. With God, you can do impossible things. I've experienced that again and again. I've experienced how God is using people who thought they were nothing. People who thought, oh, I've not accomplished much. I've not studied much. But God is not limited in what you've studied. He's not limited in your strength. He's the one who gives you the strength. He's the one who gives you the ability to conquer that's why I'm saying don't you dare give up on God but trust him trust him to do what he has promised amen trust him to do what he has promised don't look in your own ability your own ability your own strength is limited but God's ability and God's strength is unlimitless hallelujah you cannot limit God you cannot put God in in a box so when you trust in God when you trust in his strength when you trust in his ability he's taking you further and he's taking you places amen then verse 16 he says this is the last verse the lord answered i will be with you and you will strike down the immediate nights uh, uh, leaving none alive i will be with you and you will strike down the midianites ah, that's a powerful word thank you jesus god says i will be with you mm. God speaking to you such a, a, a powerful word. Oh, I'll be with you. You will defeat your enemy. If God tell, is telling you that, why are you fearing? Why are you timid? 
rise up from that timidity, rise up from that fear and move forward with the power of God, with the ability of God, with this confidence that God is causing you to win. God is causing you to overcome in Jesus name. And I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus that God open the eyes of your understanding and God continuously reveal to you, you are not alone. In your own strength, in your own ability. But God is with you and is helping you. You are coming out strong. You are coming up a winner. You are coming out an overcomer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And may the Lord confirm this word to you. That the end of the story will be revealed to you. And you will see it coming to pass that you win in Jesus name. The end of the story is you win. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. I pray that this word has encouraged you, that this word has lifted you up. Continue meditating on this word, uh, continue listening into it. And I also encourage you to subscribe to our channel, Living Up Dortmund. At the same time, uh, just uh, help us pass this message around. There's somebody who needs to hear this message. There's somebody who needs to listen to this message. They need this encouragement. They need to know that God has not abandoned them. They need to know that God has not forsaken them, that God is with them. So just share this message and let somebody uh, be blessed. Uh, and I just want to pray that may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, and may the Lord, Lord be gracious to you now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you.